Okay guys, in this video I will talk about how is it possible to have two different effective length for a particular single column. Okay, and also at the end of the video I will tell how you can assign that to different effective length that is known as LX and LY in your model. Okay, so let's start the discussion. And if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay. Now, the very first question you should ask that why you should bother about effective length. Okay. And if you are new, in that case, you should know that whenever we are going to design any column, okay, the very first criteria that you have to know that what is the cylinderness ratio of this column. And the cylinderness ratio is nothing but the effective length or the KL divided by the radius of gyration of the section about the axis about which the column is buckling, right? So here you can see that if we have a particular grade of steel, in this case, let's say we have 250 MPa grade steel, okay? This doesn't guarantee that our column will yield when the stress will reach to 250. It is not possible because the yield stress of the column is a direct function of slenderness ratio or the scale by R ratio. Here you can see as this ratio increases, the stress or the yield stress of the column also decreases. Here you can see corresponding to 100 slenderness ratio, we will have 132 MPa yield stress. But if we have 180 kL by R, in that case we will have only 50 MPa yield stress. So, this is always desirable that we will have a lesser value of slenderness ratio. If we have lesser value of slenderness ratio, let us say 50, in that case we can achieve almost 205 MPa or you can say indirectly that we are able to utilize the material more economically, correct? So, that is the main motto or target of any structural engineer to have a minimum slenderness ratio, okay? So, now it is clear to you why the slenderness ratio is so much important, okay? And now come to the effective length part, okay? As the slenderness ratio is a function of effective length, as well as the radius of gyration, we can play with this more freely. Why? Because let us say you have already selected a particular I section, okay? I section or the wide flange section. Now, for this particular wide flange section, there are two different R value, okay? About this strong axis or this major axis, we will have a radius of gyration of higher value, correct? But about this weak axis or about this minor axis, we will have a radius of gyration of lower value, right? So, when your column is buckling about this major axis or about this strong or about this x axis, you will have a higher R value. As a result, the KL by R is less and we will have a higher yield stress, right? As you can see, KL by R is less means higher yield stress, okay? But if the column buckle about this minor axis or the weak axis or about the y axis, in that case, the radius of gyration is low, okay? And for the same effective length, as the R is low, now cylinderness ratio is higher, right? And here you can see as the cylinderness ratio is higher, your yield stress is very much low, correct? So, we cannot change this R because for a particular I section or wide flange section, always we will have two different R value. One is high, another is low. So, to maintain the same level of effective length by R ratio, what we can do? We can play with this effective length, right? So, let us say initially when the column is buckling about the strong axis, the KL is L 
and the radius of gyration is r okay but when it is buckling about the minor axis let's say the effective length is l by 2 as well as the radius of gyration is r by 2 so we will have same l by r but in this case or when the column is buckling about the minor axis what we have to do we have to maintain the half length of the column and how that is possible let's understand that okay so consider this particular steel structure okay here the frame that is marked in red color is moment connected frame okay and in moment connected frame here you can see these are the flange and this is the base the bolt has been placed outside of the flange this is the flange this is the flange and of course when this column will buckle it will buckle about the major axis okay or you can see here the column will buckle like this so if the total height of this column is l we can assume that effective length kl is simply l okay but as the radius of gyration about this major axis is high okay so kl by r is already less because the r is very high okay so we don't need to play or we don't need to reduce this effective length anymore because the r is already high got the idea okay now what about this breast connection okay so previously it was moment connected frame now it is a breast connection or a shear connected if you do not know please go to the playlist there i have already made all the videos you will have a clear idea okay so about this brace connection all the joints are pin joint or the shear connection now when this column will buckle they will buckle like this okay now the problem is here the radius of gyration is very low because the column is buckling about the minor axis so to maintain a lesser value of slenderness ratio what we can do we can reduce this kl or the effective length why the r is already less if we reduce this kl or the effective length in that case the slenderness ratio will be in a lower side and we can have a higher level of stress so how we can reduce this effective length simply as we have already provided the bracing okay simply put some strut like this the struts are also pin connected and once you have put all the strut to this braced bay all this column will now buckle like this correct like this and like this so now what is the value of this effective length kl is simply l by 2 got the idea now let's learn how we can assign them into our model okay so let's say this is the model and this is the y direction this is the x direction and if we orient this column i section it looks like this this major axis or the x axis aligned with the x axis so when the column this front column this front frame will buckle they will buckle like this right so now for this column let's say the total height is l so l x is going to be l as we have already provided the strut as well as the bracing all this column will buckle like this like this like this about the minor axis also this first column will buckle like this about this minor axis okay and then this value of effective length which is known as l y is simply l by 2 and for the same column 
your design is safe in both x direction or along this major axis as well as along this minor axis if you do not understand please repeat the video again from the starting and if you have already understand and also like this video please don't forget to share it